You are now listening to The Spearsy Spin with your host, Mike Spears. Hi folks, and welcome to The Spearsy Spin. Today is May 2nd, 2017. Well, liberal Hollywood has long set the bar as it pertains to those who follow and identify with the left. And as time would have it, there are some who felt compelled to follow in the footsteps of their on-screen predecessors and remain loyal to the team, so to speak. Whenever we talk about the far left in Hollywood, the first name that always comes to mind is film producer-director Michael Moore. As you know, Mr. Moore has been out and about beating the bushes, trying to find people to help him rally against the status quo in Washington. Now, while I personally tend not to demonize Mr. Moore, I would be remiss in my duties as a conservative who writes his own commentary if I did not point out the many faults that we find in Michael Moore. Next on the list would be former TV talk show host Rosie O'Donnell. Now, if you've been following the Spearsy Spin or if you've been on my uh, Facebook account over the last several years, you would see that Rosie has been unfondly remembered by me many times because of her intolerable bitching about people on the right and her damning of the Second Amendment. Meanwhile, we can't forget Martin Sheen and his son, Charlie. While there's little question as to their acting abilities, what they attempt to portray to the public as an iconic family is actually nothing less than a demagoguery. Meryl Streep holds an MFA from Yale. And, of course, she has the idyllic posture that one can only foster from a deep-seated need to become something more than you are. She has about 43 movies to her credit, and there's no question that both the stage as well as the camera have liked her. And she is an excellent actress, in my opinion. But what happened to that waitress and that typist that was Meryl Streep who while attending Yale had to work just to make ends meet and pay herself through college. What has become of her determination for the the unimportant folks and the impoverished to succeed? Now Meryl Streep finds herself grown up, a lot older, and with only her past accomplishments to keep her company. Yet even though she was part of the capitalist status quo, we now find that she is on the far left leaning side with everybody else. Ashley Judd, now of course she's an American actress, but she's also a political activist. Now she's from a family of very successful artists, and of course she's the daughter of the country music singer Naomi Judd, and her sister is Wyona Judd. So with this pedigree, you might suspect um, that Ashley would be on top of her game. Sadly, Ashley, while at the Woman's March in uh, D.C. back in January, she said many disparaging things concerning the president as well as demeaning, uh, as giving a, a demeaning diatribe against those on the right. And yes, she has a movie or two under her belt. But I would suspect that her less than demure social graces are fostered by her mother and sister's success. And I could have this list go on and on and on and on. So why am I shining light once again to these folks that we call the subsamples from the left? And what I mean by that is these folks have, have, for the most part, made it to the top. They have become someone. They have become somebody and certainly are in the upper echelon 
of income earning. But what happened to when they first started out and they were scratching and they were clawing and trying to get by like so many Americans do today? And yet when they get to the top, they, they turn. Uh, because obviously if you're on this liberal left, especially Hollywood, then you're going to be probably within the same mindset as was Hillary Clinton with the deplorables. So if that's the case, that means that these, uh, this director and these uh, actresses and so on, actors, they also view half the country as deplorable. But isn't us being the deplorables, we're the ones going to the movies to make you rich? I don't know. But it is what it is. Well, and then... Here is the answer to all this, I think. You see, there lies within Hollywood, there's still a flicker of hope for those who have booked a personal passage on the liberal cruise line of life. Now, that sounds a bit wordy, and it sounds like a bit of philanthropy, perhaps, on my part, but it's, it's true, because it, it appears as though to be successful, within the liberal environment, you have to sign on to basically the same belief systems as uh, are out there in the Middle East. In the Middle East. <laughs> might as well be the Middle East. <laughs> hey, what a Freudian slip, huh? But it might as well be the Middle East because if you don't agree with these folks, they typically don't cast you in movies and you're ostracized. So when we talk about the liberal cruise line of life, that's what I'm talking about. Well, here's one that has debarked from the boat. His name, Richard Dreyfus. Now, Richard Dreyfus is best known for American Graffiti, Jaws, Stand By Me, Close Encounters of the Third Kind, Down and Out in Beverly Hills, The Goodbye Girl, Always, and Mr. Holland's Opus. Excellent actor. He's currently 69 years old and lives in California. Now, overall, Dreyfus has done around eh, about 26 movies, and he's regarded as an uh, an A-list actor, and uh, he's loved by millions. Mr. Dreyfus has, for many years, certainly not shared the sentiments of the right, but more importantly, never the conservatives. But even after all his successes, Mr. Dreyfus has discovered a change of heart as it pertains to politics. Moreover, Mr. Dreyfus has set the stage as a convert of sorts, as he now regards himself as a constitutionalist. Therefore, he is not a partisan member on the left nor the right. One thing that Mr. Dreyfus has done in the last few years has been to open people's eyes up. And he, he talks about the need to teach civics in our schools. He even has a website that you can visit to sign a petition to get civics taught in our schools, because currently civics have not been taught since about 1970. Now, coming up after our break, we will share a conversation with you that Tucker Carlson from Fox News recently had with Richard Dreyfus regarding America today and the need for respect. So hang on for that. Tell your friends and neighbors about the Spearsy Spin. In a recent closed-door speech to donors, politicians, and media, Bill Clinton spoke about American gun owners. Quote, a lot of these people, all they've got is their hunting and their fishing, or they've been listening to this stuff for so long that they believe it all. Unquote. And we all remember Barack Obama's 2008 comments to a room of San Francisco elites. Quote, it's not surprising then they get bitter. They cling to guns or religion. Unquote. The arrogance of their superiority requires this reminder. They don't rule us. They don't give us rights. We grant them power. They don't make us safe. We pay to protect them. They don't make us free. We're free already. 
And as long as we have the Second Amendment, we always will be. We are America, and our politicians are only as powerful as we, the people, allow them to be. Don't miss even one show. Subscribe to The Spearsy Spin now. Click that subscribe button and be sure to also click that bell next to the subscribe button so you'll be notified when we post new videos. You're never quite sure who's watching when you do a segment like that, but in that case, one person who was was Richard Dreyfus, the Oscar winner from Jaws and scores of other movies. I was actually in bed doing email and I got one from him and I thought, that can't really be Richard Dreyfus, but it actually was. He said, I want to come on and he wrote this, quote, I would be happy to come on your show and explain this rudimentary illustration of the basic checks and balances to you and your audience. That sounded great. We are always happy to promote civic knowledge on this show. We're happy to have Richard Dreyfus with us tonight. Richard Dreyfus, thanks for joining us. How you doing? So I'm doing great. So I know you spent time um, at Oxford studying this, civics. I know you know a lot about the Constitution. Um, I don't doubt that. I know you're smart. But where in the Constitution does it say states can do whatever they want in contravention of federal law and the rest of us have to be quiet and pay for it anyway. It doesn't say that. It only sim simply says that the monies attached to things that the executive might want are right. the province of the Congress. And huh. that what was said in the in the uh, judge's ruling was that that the the executive didn't have the power to withhold finances because that's the province of the Congress. And that's all I I wanted to uh, clarify because it's a it is as you say a very rudimentary thing and we should all know a hell of a lot more than that and I want to mention because I know I'm limited to six minutes I want to mention one thing the next okay. night you were talking about the speakers on university campuses yeah and I am totally uh, incontrovertibly on your side about this I think that well, any in intrusion into the freedom of speech is an intrusion into freedom of speech. And when one of the pr presidents of one of the colleges said, this is, an, this is a school, not a battlefield, I said, no, it is a battlefield of ideas, and we must have dissident, dissenting opinions on, on campuses, and I think it's uh, political correctness taken to a nightmarish uh, point of view. Well, amen. And I agree with you. And maybe because we're both over 30. Unfortunately, most people under 30 don't seem to agree with us at all. And they believe in something called hate speech, which is somehow banned because uh, they don't know what the Constitution says. But I want to get back to the first point really quick. I mean, this is a legal debate and this is probably not the best forum for it. But let me just ask you a political question. I know for certain that this kind of thing has been threatened by many presidents before because I've seen it. And, and administrations often get states to do what they want them to do by threatening to withhold money. This happened less than a year ago in May of 2016 when the Obama administration threatened to withhold federal funds from North Carolina over the famous bathroom controversy. I don't remember any federal judge saying, well, you're not allowed to do that. Why? Well, I have to beg off uh, part of this discussion because I have wi withdrawn from partisan politics. I am a constitutionalist who believes that the Constitution and the Bill of Rights must be central and the parties must be peripheral and well, I think that what's what's most important for me is what you just mentioned haphazardly uh, we're over 30 civics has not been taught in the American public school system since 1970 and that means that everyone in Congress never studied the Constitution and the Bill of Rights as you and I might have and that is a critical flaw because it's why we were admired and respected for so long. It gives us our national identity. It tells the world who we are and why we are who we are. And without a frame that gives us the values that stand behind the Bill of Rights, we're just floating in air. And our sectors of society are not connected. Well, and that's, that's exactly why right. teaching civics, and I'm so glad you said that, because what's really important, Tucker, is that the assumptions of the left and the right are all skewed wrong. We have to find areas of agreement and areas that we share. And we do share the, the notion that education accomplishes certain things. One, it turns students into citizens. Right. 
and two, it teaches students how to run the country before it's their turn to run the country. And three, it teaches the values of this nation. People come from all over the world or are born into this nation without the, the, the values that we have here. That's why they came here, to get them. And what are they? You can put them in opportunity, rise by merit, and mobility and freedom. That's what we sell. And if you don't want that, you've chosen the wrong place. And you don't get a pass by being born here. You have to learn it. Even the Ten Commandments are not known at birth. You must learn them. And we must learn our values. And if we don't, we are fatally, fatally wounding ourselves. We will not have any way to really combat the ideas behind ISIS because we won't know our own. And we have to. So I... You know, typically I interrupt our guests and I expected to debate you, but that was, uh, I agree with every single word of that. And I just want to say thank you very much for coming, for emailing me uh, late night and for coming on to say that because I think it's important. And can I hope I, that people watch Can this. I give you one idea? Can I give you one idea? Give me one quick this idea. for everybody. Okay. Everyone knows the preamble to the Constitution or should. And the preamble is meant, is in fact the mandate of the, con of the, of America. And I say, if every parent and teacher and school superintendent and public political commentator signed the preamble as a gesture of support for the demand to bring civics back to the grades below high school graduation, I'll call a civic strike. And we will get the attention of all the people that deserve to pay attention. That is a great point. And we'll point. get it back. If you do that, I hope you'll come on to tell us how you're spreading that idea. I'm doing it. People, people can go to my website, which is thedreyfusinitiative.org, huh. and it's on the website. Sign the preamble. Done. Richard Dreyfus, thanks for thanks. coming on tonight. Don't go away. We have to pay some bills. And then we're coming back with Mike Spears. In a recent closed-door speech to donors, politicians, and media, Bill Clinton spoke about American gun owners. Quote, a lot of these people, all they've got is their hunting and their fishing, or they've been listening to this stuff for so long that they believe it all. Unquote. And we all remember Barack Obama's 2008 comments to a room of San Francisco elites. Quote, it's not surprising then they get bitter. They cling to guns or religion. Unquote. The arrogance of their superiority requires this reminder. They don't rule us. They don't give us rights. We grant them power. They don't make us safe. We pay to protect them. They don't make us free. We're free already. And as long as we have the Second Amendment, we always will be. We are America. And our politicians are only as powerful as we, the people, allow them to be. Hello. This is Captain Jack Sparrow. So you've already met this dastardly scoundrel who calls himself Mike Spears. That would mean that you're listening to the Spearsy Spin Night. By my reckoning, if you give a thumbs up and subscribe, this would make you one of the crew. Savvy. Well, you've heard what Richard Dreyfus has to say about the young folks today and the need to teach the students about civics and, more importantly, teach the Constitution. That's our show for tonight, folks. We would like to know how you feel about this show or any other show. So please visit us at thespearsyspin.blogspot.com and let us know what you think. Be professional, because you never know what you put there could end up on the screen and on our show. Remember, folks, there's only one world, and we all have to get along in it. So do your part. We'll see everyone tomorrow. Thanks for being with us today. Until next time.